This is the biggest experience of my life on flight that I'm just supposed to do in like two minutes. Going to news agents and just seeing a big picture of me. That was, that was really good. And it was a big one in the evening standards. I think on all the rainbows that I see, I wish on all the people who really dream. I'm wishing on tomorrow, praying never come. I'm out there on my own and I haven't got an agent. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll never close. So there's nothing worse in the world than rejection in which any form. I think everyone's had it, but it never gets easier. It never gets easier. I'm waiting on a star. Lots of kids dream of stardom, but the students of the Italia Conti Academy of Theatre Arts just might be one step nearer to their dreams coming true. Yeah. All of them have struggled to get even this far. For 60 new places every year, there are 4,000 inquiries, so competition is fierce. Now it's not hip here, yeah, you're not in Blackpool, you're shoulder to shoulder. Those who do get in face a demanding schedule designed to prepare them for all aspects of a career in show business. They've got to make you believe that they want this more than anything else but they've got the drive, the ambition, the dedication, as well, obviously, as the talent. <laughs> Italia Conti is the oldest theatre school in the world. Over the years, hundreds of graduates have made it in the business. But what are the chances for this year's young hopefuls? You hope they're all going to be successful, but, you know, it's very doubtful. I should, should think, you know, if one out of each group actually achieves success, it will be an achievement. So if you haven't worked, you've got to get the voice warmed up again. Now, some of you haven't sung for two months, but remember, if the voice is trained well, you can sing any time. Very, very gently this afternoon, we start humming. 18-year-old Ben Forster came to Conte's because he wants to be a professional singer. I feel the best time I've ever sung was at my old comprehensive school in Sunderland, talent competition, and I won. So I went up and got the award and said, oh, when you sing it again? And I went to start singing it again, and everyone was just saying my name, and I couldn't, I couldn't start song for about five minutes. Oh. And then everyone just thought, <laughs> starts clapping, and you think, yeah, I've done it right. It's really good. That's why I love it, that's all. E, e, smile, E, relax, relax, smile, E, A, E, I, O, U. I know I definitely do want to sing, and I definitely want to perform, and I would love to do West End. Like, I would absolutely love to do West End. It's amazing when you listen to a good singer, and all the hairs on the back of your neck rise, and then when you do that big note, and you think, yes, I was just so amazed with it. Every single hair on every single body's neck rise from just singing that knot and it's just affecting people when you finish singing. And can you feel the love tonight? How it's laid to rest. It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe. I've always encouraged him to go as high as he can and do to the stars and he can have anything he wants basically. That's our philosophy. Or he can get anything he wants if he works hard enough. There's a time for everyone If they only learn That the twisting kaleidoscope Moves us all in turn There's a rhyme and a reason when he finally made the decision he wanted to go to Conti, we mortgaged the house to pay Ben's fees. 
um, but also his rent, which was so... The rent's a lot of, a lot of money. I mean, the biggest sacrifice was made is losing them. When he came to London and I had to leave him, that was our theatre, you know. Yeah, I just miss, I just miss Ben, mate. Oh, no, I did. I just want to see him on the West End mm. and just give him a stand on the face of myself and just say, that's my boy. Alone in London, Ben is struggling to make ends meet, even with his parents' help. On top of eight hours a day of classes, he's had to take a part-time job to get by. I've got a job in the Lyceum Theatre where the lines have started, and that's just selling like all the memorabilia and stuff. I'm really busy. I've got work at quarter past eight. Um, I've been in college all day. I'm worn out. I'm living on these and that, which is just so easy. But they're like good substitute. Everything's a mess. My room's a mess. I haven't had time to clean it for about <laughs> two or three weeks. But there is a solution to his problem getting paid work as a singer. Getting professional work is very important. If I got money, I wouldn't have to press my parents much. I wouldn't have to work as hard outside of college, which means I'm tired for college next year. And I don't know, it's very important. And the experience as well. If I can get some work, then I've worked with these people, these people, I've done this, that and that. Then I go out and my first day of leaving college, I can give someone a CV with all professional work then. That's one of the fab for me. This is Georgia Root. She's late for ballet class. Again. kids, when they're young, their mum either sends them to football or to dancing. And it's just, us lot were the ones that never left. So we got to the age when that's all we'd ever done. We didn't have anything else to do, any other ideas in our heads for a career, so we came here. Well, I did anyway. I want to be an extender. The main thing I want to do. Or a pop group. Well, let's face it, I'm not a ballerina, I'm not a classical opera singer, and I'm not a straight actress, I really. What I want to do sounds a bit corny, it sounds like I only want to be in this thing because everyone watches it, and I only want to be in a pop group because I'll get loads of money. But it's not, it's just that they're the only things that... They're the only things that I like, do you know what I mean? But now George is in her last year at school, she's finally starting to worry about the future. You actually realise that you're not here to have a laugh and to have a social life, which really it was in the first and second year. And you don't really get your head down to what you're actually there for. Well, I didn't anyway. That's why I'm so worried, really, because I'm sort of panicking more than if I was to have thought about it earlier. They say in the profession that if you haven't worked after six months of leaving college, then you won't work at all. It's a bit worrying. Worry about it every day. Kelly Young is 17 years old. She wants to be the best. I hate to be average. I just want to sort of excel in whatever I choose to do. A lot of me wants to be um, on billboards and wants to be on the front of magazines and in everyone's living room and I want everyone to be talking about me all the time. Um, I think it's because I need people to think I'm good. And if everyone's talking about me and saying, oh, oh yeah, Kelly's good, then sort of I know that I've sort of achieved my goal. Yeah. No, this is just this week's dance posture. This is my life, isn't it? My mum was brought up in Barbados. Um, and she moved over to England when she was 18. She 
had me, she brought me up on her own. And I think she's, I really respect how she's done because she's done really well. Because you're feeling the line like it's going on. So you're taking your vitamins, in you? Iron tablets? Yes. Mm. Eating my Halliburton? My dad, uh, when I met him, I met him when I was 14, and um, he found out what I, what I was doing and what I wanted to do, and he just thought it was a waste of time. He thought that I should be concentrating on studying academically and um, not wasting my time prancing around. <laughs> and I want everyone who ever didn't believe in me just to... Do you know what I mean? See that I can achieve things. We can still get them. We'll sort it out when we get up there. Hopefully no one's gone up yet. Otherwise everyone goes up there, right? 20-year-old so Tim Brown has just been appointed head boy, but then he's the only boy left in the final year. Today he's showing new students around the school. Um, whilst you're at Conti's, you're represented by like the Italian Conti agency, okay? As I say, they'll have all your details, your photo, your CV and all that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, they send you for auditions. It varies. You get like, um, you can be sent for like musicals. I mean, you know, private to musicals to hot mood lovers. Can't get much more varied than that. Though, can so, um, I've been to a few auditions. I'm not good. And it's, it's so easy to go back and say, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I getting this? When I think that I'm going out there with not, not a lot of experience or not a lot of credits to my name on my CV, I, and that worries me. And that does worry me. But there's times when you feel like crap. But as long as you keep believing and you keep pushing yourself, that's the one thing I lack, I think, at times is that get up and go, that, that cheekiness to be able to phone that person up and say it's all about me, that's the one thing on that. All second and third year students are represented by the school's in-house agency who take a standard percentage of their earnings. It's run by Dana Sheward, who sees it as a way to prepare the students for the harsh reality of their working lives ahead. If I had my way, they would all be working 52 weeks of the year because then I'd be rich and have a new kitchen. But they're not. You know, there's, not, there's really nothing you can do about it because that, particularly in this business, all they've got to sell is themselves. I've not had one audition, I don't know why. There's quite a few others that haven't had one audition either. It's hard, it, you just have to keep trying to convince them that it's not a personal and that everybody's here because they can do something. 60% of this is luck and being in the right place at the right time. You could have somebody who's got a fantastic voice or be the greatest actor God ever put on his earth, but if they don't fit the brief, they're not going to get it. There's quite a few of us who um, come from London, Essex, Kent. Well, we don't talk common, but we don't talk posh. And we're sort of, um, I don't know, we're not sent on any auditions. I don't know if it's, that's the reason. I mean, you pay so much for your photographs and they're supposed to send them out to casting agents, directors, whatever. I don't think one of mine has been sent out. The last time I looked in the filing cabinet, it was a full pile. Then you send the pictures and the CVs off and then everybody gets upset because you you know, they come back and you might think 10, 20 people and they only want to see one. And then you get, well, why that one and not this one? And why aren't I on it? And it's very difficult to explain to them. She's definitely a favourite and I don't know how she picks them. I don't know. Um, you do get, I mean, I think you get closer to some than others. But that's down to them, because they're the clever ones that make sure you know who they are. It's a big day for Ben. Today he has a private audition for a part in one of the world's biggest hit musicals, Les Miserables. Listening to the Les Mis CD when I was little, that's what gave us my whole passion and the whole urge to do everything that I want to do. So it's very important. This would be like my main dream in London. 
bends up against huge competition. This audition is only the first step. In this uh, casting session for Les Mis, we'll see several hundred people. Um, and you know, then many of those will be seen two, three, four, sometimes five or six times even. Like, imagine this is how nervous you are when you take a driving test or something. This is how nervous you are when you audition for Les Mis. <laughs> yeah? This is like a panel of people who are going to be sitting watching me sing and judging me for whatever talent I've got. And they could be critical, they could be, they could give us praise, anything. I don't know what they're going to do, I don't know which way they're going to act. I went in front of three or four strangers on a stage, the, one of the most important stages in the London West End, to have an audition and to sing a song. I'm nervous. Very, <laughs> very nervous. Okay, Ben. When I went home before, no one talked of the war. What they say on TV didn't have a thing to do with me. I went back and reacted. Sure, oh, that guy is corrupt. What is this? <laughs> But here, if you can pull a string, a guy like me lives like a king. Just as long as you don't believe anything. asking you how often I, I don't know and then they expect you to know everything but I don't know I'm only a checkout operator Georgia come in please take a seat now beginning of January you know we're doing this millennium service in St Paul's Cathedral we're going to do on par par from Oliver line of bar Oliver now the first person that sings in this uh, part of Nancy has got to have a most incredible charisma and a belting chest voice like uh, you've never heard. So I would like you to audition. Now listen first, Mark, can you, can you read the words? I mean, it's Cockney, but don't worry about that at the moment. Listen, this is under tempo. There's a little bit singing in the city. I don't know what to do if I was to do it, but it's got to be loads of people yet. Uh, 
Well, that impressed me. I, um, not only does she look like that, but I think that's the voice I want. I'm going to hear maybe three or four more girls, but um, no, that was a good audition. That's a good audition. Kelly's got a job in the chorus of a musical version of Othello called Poison. It's produced by the Tricycle, a fringe theatre in North London. I'm really nervous because um, it's my first job and I'm only a baby. <laughs> it's sort of less glamorous than I expected. It's the more to sort of 10 in the morning till 11 at night. And then, you know, straight back the next morning. I was expecting it to be hard work. But it is, a, it is a bit harder than I expected. World, some big producer would come and watch the show and he'd say she's the one and he'd sign me to EMI and I'd have like you know like a multi-million dollar recording contract and it'd be fantastic and I'd be made and I'd be bigger than Whitney but in reality what I want is um, just to take away um, the experience and the fact that um, people have seen my face people who know people and have got contacts Tim Brown has got a gig, but it's meant taking time off school to work in Wolverhampton for three months. I miss people, I miss some of my friends, but you know, that's part of the profession, you know, you've got to get used to that, so I get used to that. I'm going out at the moment. Yeah, it's only for three months, so I'll be back soon before you know it, so you know, hopefully some, some of my friends can come up to see it, hopefully. Tim's in the chorus of a panto, Jeff and the Beanstalk, doing 14 performances a week. I don't know what I expect my first gig to be. I, you know, you just hope anything comes along. And this was just good for the time, you know? This was just appropriate. As well as being in the chorus, he has a special role of his own. I wanted to be the fun, apparently. But then they said, no, we've got to rotate it, because it's only fair, because you can't live three months and be in the back end of a car, so. I had all the blue jokes, what's your motivation and treading past your green. You always hope that whatever work you're doing is going to lead to something bigger and better next time. And you just have to apply yourself and give as good as you get and hope someone sees you want to employ in the future. Ben has another audition, this time for a brand new West End show, La Carva. But will he pull it off this time? I'm really nervous because I forgot the words last time um, and I'm scared if I do it again I'm going to look stupid so I'm just trying to remember words, words, words and not worry. Concert, but there's only one rehearsal, just 24 hours before the big day. Choreographer Bonnie Lithgow is struggling to put together the dance routines in time. 
If anybody asked me what the heck a coil was, I wouldn't remember the first step. But it's like over there and onto the next bit. It's like a sausage machine. One in, one out, one in, one out. at St Paul's. The cathedral is packed with two and a half thousand celebrities and dignitaries celebrating the new millennium. Down in the crypt, George is getting nervous. I'm not really a singer, but because this sort of, and like my sort of song, that's why I was picked for it. So singing, yeah, this is the first thing I've ever done on my own. into the agency for news about his last audition. Well, you are somebody amazing, thank you. Okay. What? Oh, my God. You are definitely, definitely in the show. Oh, my God. So I think you are a very big thank you. What's that, Mum? Oh, yeah. Oh, look. Now, <laughs> yeah, phone your mum. Don't tell her. I'm very proud. It's like, it's fun, isn't it? I mean, he's up here, I'm sitting, I'm shaking. I was absolutely shaking. Um, and also you have to sort of be quite, now, this is what you've got to do. And really, you want to jump up in the air and go, it's just so clever, I'm really proud of you. But you can't. Um, you just sort of be a grown-up. Because he does the crying, and then you want to cry with them, and you think, oh. Hello, Mum. It's me. Guess what? I've got, I've got the shorts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't even, I'm just shocked. <laughs> Thank you. I'll ring you later, bye. You don't understand how happy I am. I'm so happy. I can't believe it. Because it's what everyone wants to do. That's what I've wanted to do since I knew. Since the first day that I started singing, whatever. The first time I, the first I went to a theatre, I thought that's what I want to do. And now I'm going to do it properly. Hello, Mum. Hello. 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 It's a fucking house, it's a great experience. Because going in as a chorus member, you are bottom of the pile. You are. 
So you've got to get used to that. And I think if you want to make your way to the top, the people who start at the top are the best at the top. I think the people that can appreciate all the steps going up to that. And I think in that sense, Panto is great. Because you, you do become, well, I mean, you can't get lower than a cow, can you, for God's sake? The first night of Kelly's show, Poison. Her mum and her school friends have come along to see her perform. for La Carva. people every night. It's a very different world from the small fringe theatres where most Conti students begin their careers. Ben's in at the deep end. On top of the ensemble numbers and all the dance routines, Ben is also understudying one of the principal roles he has to learn the part of the juvenile lead, Prince Somal. Right, yeah. <laughs> I will hold you in my arms and say I love you. And before the year is out, I'll find a way. on arms, you're putting in a slight um, error. <laughs> Back at school, rehearsals begin for the final year show, Slice of Saturday Night. It's the last chance for Georgia to show people what she can do. to write off to the agents as soon as possible because um, I want to give them enough time. I want them to come and see me in our musical life. If I get an agent, it'll be fine. I won't be as, as worried because there's someone helping you. But if I'm out there on my own and I haven't got an agent, I don't know what I'm going to do. Working, being here, I suppose. Wouldn't have a clue. The reviews of Poison have come out. Most of the music is little more original than the lyrics, which are packed with couplets like, he must suffer the loss and the pain, he has only himself and his jealous native to blame. And believe it or not, they really do rhyme love with stars of the book. Somehow I don't think you'll find that in a fellow itself. Could you get more sarcastic? There's a lady also who wrote, who really, was really criticising us, saying that we were trying to make it into some sort of 
like you know trying to change it into a sexy sort of thing by what we were wearing and, and she just got the totally wrong gist of the whole thing in general and I just wanted to sit her down and say did you actually watch the show there's another guy who criticized um who said there was no no like black influence in the music and I, I felt like saying did you, have you actually listened to the songs you know he must have been sleeping the whole way through it the day that it comes out you think oh you know when you get the morale gets a bit low but but because you we've got some good ones and because it's just the, the person who writes through if he doesn't necessarily um, know much about the subject that the play's about so I mean it, you just take it with a pinch of salt and you just carry on and do what you're doing and continue to try and make the show better The opening night of La Carva Ben's parents have travelled down from Sunderland to watch him take his first steps onto a West End stage <laughs> Glitzy first night party, even the chorus line get to mingle with the stars. You're from Sunderland, right? Yeah. So you would have been a big fish in a small pond there. Probably. Yeah, and then you come to a tiny country and you are a, a big fish with all the big fishes. No, I'm a tiny No, you're made to feel like a tiny little fish by your peers there because they're insecure. <laughs> but see, what's happened is you've proved everyone wrong and now you've got a show, you're on a show and that's great. It is fab and I love it. Well, good luck. Thank you. A world away in a pub theatre in Clapham, it's the first night of Georgia's end of year show. Of all the agents she called, only one has come along. What I'm looking for is a certain type of person, perhaps somebody who doesn't clash with somebody I've already got, but most of all I'm looking for talent, obviously. Then I'm looking for commitment to the profession and commitment to their ambitions, really. Probably 150 to 200 students in drama school will write to me. I would hope to see about 80 to 100 of them during the course of the year. I'm probably looking to take on only about half a dozen in any one year. Anne Britt has asked for a meeting before the show. Will Georgia make the right impression? I'm definitely right there. I'll come across definitely. But obviously she must have been interested otherwise she wouldn't have been arranged an interview. Hello Georgia. Thank you for coming back. Please sit down. Hi. So you got up in the back for a half an hour, haven't you? Tell me about it. Tell me where you came from, where you want to come to see farming business. Which is absolutely practice to be in. But, well, I come from a very thin. It was really, really nice. Talkative. Didn't feel uncomfortable at all. Well, I did when I was made to speak, when I didn't have anything to say, because I just started putting that load of rubbish.
I don't know, because she's so professional, she, she sort of like doesn't give you any idea of whether she wants you or not. Well, obviously, she, obviously so far she's interested, well, that was before, <laughs> before she saw me in that. La Calva is now a month into its run. Ben has been called into the office for some big news about the part he's been understudying. Good. Good news. Getting the chance to play Samal means sharing a big duet with the leading lady, Julie Alana Brighton. Yeah, just a little one. I was going to tell you. What? I'm on a Thursday. Oh, yeah! Yes! 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 I am a bit nervous because if I don't get this agent then I'm going to be in quite a bit of trouble really because I haven't, even if I do apply to other agents I haven't got anything for them to, to show them now. It is a bit worrying. I would be really gutted if she doesn't want me. But I don't know. All be for the best I suppose, whatever her decision. If she does say, oh yeah, I've decided to um, represent you, then what do I say? Oh, fantastic, or what? <laughs> what the last I say? Just tell me. Hello? Hello. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yep, definitely. Okay then. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you Anne. Bye. Oh, thank God for that. Ben's big night. A coachload of friends and family have come from Sunderland to London to see his first leading West End role. Yeah. Man! I'll see you after. Wait for me, man. I've got to win. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, God. Remember, keep focused. I know. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. We did not happen this quick. Like, oh, this soon, then I started to panic and think, God, we're really like, doing more panics on the night. So, we'll be 11 things. Ill. I'm shaking now. You'll be alright. This morning when I woke up, I just started shaking. I've been like running there like a looper. I feel like it's one of these things. It would have been alright, I think, if I just knew that everyone was out there. Because I went in and met them all over the woods. It was like, just feel, it's just an hour, there's people who I've been seeing for ages. And I was like, I'm still trying to do a just seeing them. And now I've just gone like performing for them when I've never done it in front of people before. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the part of Samal will be played by Mr. Ben Forster.
of me, you say that you'll miss me, then break with tradition and kiss me goodbye. You know it's forbidden to kiss before marriage. But feeling like this, I don't understand why. Miranda, I told you until we are wed, my arm will be Your still. Honest. Don't kiss me, you, you know, know that, that I want to. Get me away. Do you hear what I say? I was nervous on my first line. That's all. But then I feel like my head was just going to be burst open. And then I went on and it was fab. And then I got to the end where Judy goes. And I just suddenly realised that I was just standing there all by myself. And it wasn't a nervous feeling. It was like kind of a ha <laughs> ha kind of. I was really like kind of proud of myself just to be standing there. And it was weird to just feel in the spotlight on my face. When you're in the ensemble, you don't really feel it much. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's weird just feeling that someone's following you around the light. Fab. Beautiful. I can't believe how much my life has changed since last year. Who the thought in the year that I was going to do this? What a day. What a job. What a life. Kelly Young is now starring in a TV drama about a fictional pop band. Poison closed after an eight-week run. Tim Brown had an audition for Hollyoaks, but didn't get the part. He's still waiting for his big break. Now she's got an agent, Georgia Roots is hoping for an East Enders audition. In the meantime, she's working at B&Q. Ben Forster left school before his final year. He'll be appearing in La Cava until the end of the run. Oh, 